So I have been playing with air dry clay a lot lately, um, and I wanted to share some of the things that I've explored and tried that you might find helpful as well. So this is a piece we'll actually play with some, but first I'm going to pull this slab over. So this is really slab that I just rolled out to do a bunch of different experiments on. You could do this on independent tiles, it's really fine, but I do recommend like just making a slab and then trying a bunch of things. So we'll flip over to this side. This is an experiment that did not really work. Um, well, parts of it worked, I should say, and parts didn't. So I rolled out the slab and then I laid pieces of construction paper on here and then I painted it with colored slip. And the goal was to be able to pull the paper away and have this interesting pattern. So what worked well is I was actually hoping the construction paper would bleed, leaving coloring on the clay because of it being wet. So that part of it actually worked. The part that did not work well is when I was playing with making my colored slip and I thought this might happen, but I tried it anyway. I mixed, and so I'll pull a little piece off. I mixed house paint into my slip as the color. And so one, I think the ratio probably was not that great. There was too much house paint to the slip. And so house paint kind of uh, just like ends up sort of peeling off, especially while I was kind of pulling the paper away. So I think the general idea would work. I would do the construction paper again, but I would not mix in the house paint because that doesn't work. So you can learn from that. So flipping over to this side, I'm gonna talk about some of the things I did and then go a little bit into more detail about how to do it. So all of these raised parts, this was um, slip that I made from air dry clay. And then I just put it into a plastic Ziploc bag, trimmed the tip so that I could kind of use it like an icing bag, and made designs with that. So we'll talk about how to do that. That worked really well. One of the great things about air dry clay that you cannot do with regular clay is even when your clay is dry, so this slab was dry and then I still added the slip, and it will adhere. So you can continue to layer and add clay to air dry clay even when it's dry. So that's an awesome thing for our students to explore. Um, so some other things that you're seeing on here, I wanted to play with just different ways of adding color, adding marks, and I really just started to grab things that were in my studio. And on here, I also labeled them. So this is slip, as I said. Um, these sections right here, so that is a pencil. That's a 4B pencil, which is, um, and this is all clear coated as well. So then I actually loved how the pencil looked, so I tried it with a 6B pencil, which worked. However, as you can see, when I clear coated it, then that actually really smudged, where the 4B pencil did not really smudge. So that is something to keep in mind while you're exploring. Um, this is Sharpie, so I play with drawing with Sharpie on here. This is highlighter which I did not really love how the highlighter worked. Um, over on this side, I'm just trying to get you the best light. This probably is the best light. Over on this side, um, this is Uli watercolor. It's kind of, it's these. It's like an iridescent pack, um, which looks really cool. And this down here is also the Uli watercolor. It's just with less water and more pigment. So you can see the difference of how that looks. Um, so this is a really fun slab of just experimenting. So let's talk about how to create some of these things in case you want to experiment like this as well. So first we'll look at the slip. So I'm gonna adjust my camera a little bit here for you. Okay, so this is creating slip. Um, this has kind of been in progress for a while. So if you've made slip out of regular clay, it's the exact same process. If you haven't, I will explain how to do it. So what I find the easiest to do when making slip is to actually start with um, 
bone dry clay. So having clay that is totally dried out and then using that. Um, it, it will make much smoother slip. So these are little pieces from another experiment that I didn't really love. You're always going to have bits and pieces, even like these that were cut off of slabs. You're always going to have bits and pieces from your students that are really dried out. So it's a great way to just collect that, and then that is what you can use to make your slip. So I would take a handful of that, put it into my plastic container, and then add some water. I just let that sit overnight. So you do have to plan ahead a little bit for this. It works much better if you're not trying to rush it. And then each day, I stir it and you'll be able to decide if you need to add more water to it or not until it's kind of the consistency that you want it to be. This is also the point where if I wanted to kind of play with colored slip, which we will, um, I'm going to add some paint into it. So since I did not like the house paint, I'm going to go ahead and try some acrylic paint, squirting that on in there, and stirring it. You also have to keep playing with this to get the color that you want to get, because it is going to get muted out some by the clay. You can also see that as soon as I added the paint, this is really making my slip get a lot thicker. So I do not want my slip to be quite that thick. So I'm going to just go ahead and pour a little bit of water into that. So this is a little bit of a back and forth that you have to keep exploring. And I kind of, as I said, I will work on slip for sometimes a couple days it's better if it has time to really like sit and set up. You can also see as I do this the color continues to change because it's getting mixed in with the clay more and it's getting mixed in with the water. But you do want to you don't want to rush this. You want to make sure that it's really fully mixed together. If you need it to be super super smooth you could also um, kind of run this through a screen or a grater, not a grater, um, any kind of stream, screen or strainer is what I mean to say, not a grater. Um, but that can depend on what you're actually using it for. So this is almost ready, so I'm going to move it out and we're going to do a little experimenting with it. So this is just another, so this is a slab of air dry clay that it's still a little damp, so you can tell it's still a little bit damp if it's, it's a little bit cold to the touch, but it's fine to continue working with. Um, I already did a little bit of layering um, of Uli watercolor. I was playing with just bringing out some slight color into it. And now we're gonna play with the slip. So you can see that's a nice smooth consistency. And for this, uh, there's lots of different ways you can use it, but one, you can paint with it. So you can add that onto the surface. And this is where you might want to think about how, depending on what you're doing, how thick or how thin you want your slip to be. So once I have my, my slip there, I can actually draw into it. So that I'm creating, so I'm creating a bit of a pattern, and now because my clay underneath is already dry, it's really only going through the slip surface, 
if you were doing this on something that's leather hard, which you can do, then you could also be digging some into the clay surface. Um, but because air dry clay will adhere to itself even when it's dry, you don't have to worry about that quite as much as you would have to if you were using regular clay. So now we're gonna experiment with our bag. I'm gonna go ahead, just cause I don't wanna get another bag, and add some of this colored clay, colored slip right into this mix that I already have. Alright, so now we have some of our blue slip in there. It's going to change colors because it's mixed with another one. Um, you want to kind of squish it into the corner just like you were having an icing bag and then I cut that tip off. So now I'm going to play. I'm going to squirt a little bit out. You might have students practice. So this is a scrap piece of paper from another project. Um, have so my tip is a little clogged because this has been sitting around for a while. So we got to get that started. All right, now it's coming out. Um, you might want to have students just do a little bit of testing with their piping skills or whatever they're trying to do on some scrap paper first. to get a feel for it before they actually go onto their project. So I'm gonna set this to the side and go on to my piece. Again, this slab that I'm going on to is dry, but that is okay with air dry clay, not okay with regular clay. So you can see that my blue is starting to mix in. This is also where you would want to think about kind of the consistency of your slip. But this can be really fun for students to do, um, but it can also really make some interesting pieces. You can make several different colors of slip and have your students share that. The great thing about making slip is it's pretty inexpensive and it can be a way that you're kind of reclaiming and using clay that's dried out. So another thing that I might explore is I could take tools and then kind of play with what happens if I run my tool through my slip. How can I move that around? So what I like to think about even with our students using this is having them do a slab or a few slabs almost like sketchbook pages so that it's just full of a lot of different information. And then like on my last one you saw I actually go in and label it. So I take my pencil this is my 4B pencil, which is what I found writes really well in here. And I might say, so this is colored slip. Um, this is like piped slip. This is painted. Slip. So adding little bits of information um, that's all right on the slab and ready for students to use and explore. And then just like I did on my last slab, once this is dry, then I'll actually flip it over and do some other experiments on the back. So there will be, there'll be a front and back to this. It takes a little bit of time to dry. You have to be patient, um, but that's, that's totally fine of having students really explore and see what they can make. The other thing I might do, just because it sounds like fun, 
and I have a bunch of slip left. Let's kind of see, because I haven't done this before. What happens if I make this like fairly tall tower? Um, and we'll kind of see how that holds up. So it's those type of questions that I'm not sure how it will hold up because I haven't done it before. Or I might use my slip to make a more interesting edge on my piece and kind of see how that starts to look. But your students are going to love doing this. Um, you can see my slip is coming out kind of like a little bit of a marble texture because I mixed it in there with other things. So there I'm going to see that that's kind of falling over. Also remembering that you can keep on building onto things. So I might let this I might let this dry so that it's a little bit sturdier and then come back in and do another layer to it and see what happens. The slip in your bags, as long as you have the bag closed, it will last for a long time. So this kind of, the stuff that was already in here, whoops, um, it's been sitting in here for like uh, almost two weeks and it will stay totally fine. So that's another great thing that the slip is super easy to store and continue to use. And then after this is dried, I do like to do the, the seal coat on it. It makes it look a little bit more finished and just makes your clay a little bit sturdier, but you do need to wait till it totally dries so that that doesn't smear all over the place. Um, so hopefully these are some fun ideas for you to explore yourself and then explore with your students. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is repurposing air dry clay. So we all know one of the pros of air dry clay is it dries out pretty quickly in the air. One of the cons of air dry clay is that it dries out pretty quickly in the air. And so that means when the bag's not closed totally properly, it dries out before we're ready for it to dry out. So if you've repurposed um, just regular clay, it's, it's the same type of process. Um, and you can do this even if you don't have a pug mount. So you need, I just got a plastic bag. This one has a hole in it, so not the greatest choice, but that's what I have sitting here at the moment. So plastic bag. I like to let the clay, I think it's easier, so just like the slip, let the clay totally dry out. Um, so then you uh, kind of make your pile. You're going to add some water. I actually normally do this in um, newspaper bags. I find that they work really well. Put that inside of there, add some water, let it sit for 24 hours, and then go back and keep seeing if it needs more water and kind of squishing it around in the bag. Um, and you'll just continue to do that until you'll feel that it comes back to a really nice clay consistency so that you can kind of bring your clay back to life. Now, if your students have, like if a big chunk is fairly dry, and just so you know, this piece, this whole piece of clay, this slip, everything, this was all repurposed air dry clay. Um, you can have students, if it's just like their whole box or bag, slowly squirt water back in um, and it will it will kind of spring back to life. You just want to make sure it's, it's a bit of a slow process because you need to figure out the right amount to add in and you need to give the clay time to absorb that water. But you can bring air dry clay back to life.